Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative people like you and me to explore our new passion and express our creativity. I've been dedicating a lot more time to creating new content, and I'm very passionate about filming and editing. Even though I've been making videos for a while now, but there are still tons of things I didn't know about, such as camera setup, lighting, and filming techniques, etc. When I started taking classes on Skillshare and diving more into filmmaking, I became even more obsessed with it. Now I know a little bit more about cinematography. Whenever I'm watching a movie or TV show, I feel like subconsciously I'm always trying to analyze the scene, the camera angle, like the color, just to see what I like about it and take notes in my head. I know it sounds ambitious, but maybe in the future one day, I could create a short film myself. And recently, I started learning more about color grading. I really enjoy Dan Dan Liu's classes. The way she explains things and breaks things down is very easy to comprehend, and her voice is so soothing. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes covering topics like illustration, design, photography, freelancing, and more. If you're interested in getting a free trial of Skillshare Premium membership, check out the link in my description come join this big creative community and let's learn together so let's begin the video and for today's video i'm going to do something different i'm going to talk to you guys and explain my process in a voiceover instead of adding a lot of notes in the video that nobody gonna read this video is probably one of the hardest video i filmed just because as a beginner to baking, I had to redo this cake roll three times in order to get it right. Actually, it's three failed attempts before it came out looking okay. To be honest with you guys, I almost gave up on it. I was like, this video just not gonna come out good. The first two times I did it off camera, in my head I was for sure that the third time gonna work out so i started filming but you guys are gonna see it later i still had some problem with it although it's so much better than the first two times so i had two choices one just give up on it <laughs> and move on and second is just redo it one more time and see how it goes so as always i decided to push myself and just get it right do it one more time it turned out pretty good i'm pretty happy with the result although it's still not perfect but i still want to give myself a little pat on the back you know since i'm still learning so i'm going to share what i learned from my mistakes and some tips that i picked up during the process overall i still want this video to be a relaxing video for you guys to watch i even thought about whether or not i should include the failed attempt in this video but i feel like it's good to let people know that mistakes happen and to share more of the struggle i had trying out a new thing and i want to show you guys even though i'm dabbling more into different field it might seem like i did a pretty smooth in the video but sometimes there are struggles behind the camera i'm going to share the mistakes i made during the first two failed attempts uh, a little later since right now I'm mixing the cake batter I just want to let you guys know what happened for some reason I was feeling very confident in myself after two failed attempts so I decided to improvise and combine two different cake batter recipes together later I will learn that it's a big mistake. I think I was focusing too much on making the pattern looking as detailed and perfect as I can. So I kind of ignored or I didn't think about the fact that two different cake batter won't stick together. And you guys will see what happened. I do want to mention the reason I chose the first um, cake batter recipe, egg, flour, and sugar is because based on the tutorial I saw, the mixture is a little thicker than the other cake batter recipe so that it's easier to do more intricate pattern like especially when I was doing the outlines of the flowers during my second attempt the pattern came out really sloppy I did a different like decorative element not the cherry blossoms but it just came out like not 
as how I expected, so I decided to change it to my favorite flower of all time. The pattern is inspired by my tattoo on my right wrist. I don't know if you guys noticed or not. I am going to redo the same pattern all over again later just with a different cake batter. When I was redoing it, it was getting really late and I was just exhausted at that point. So I feel like the pattern came out a lot better in the first round. The second one I did was pretty cute too, but I think I put more effort into the first one. When I was doing the second one, I just wanted to get it done right, so I wasn't focusing too much on making the pattern look perfect. But I do want to say that both cake rolls came out tasting really good. <laughs> so maybe that's the silver lining. One tip I want to share with you guys is you can put like an ice pack underneath the pan when you're doing intricate like patterns like this or I feel like for beginners it might be easier to do more simple patterns. I've seen people done like cloud pattern or cute little hearts. I feel like I'm just always trying to do something that kind of incorporating my own um, artistic techniques, you know, like do something more innovative rather than just repeating those tutorials I saw. I want to add more to it. For example, like the cookie video I made as an artist, I really enjoy that and I feel like people might want to see it. You know, like what would happen if a sculptor tried to make a cake sculpture? I would say the most difficult part is the temperature because everyone's oven is different. The recipes I found on Xiaohongshu, which is a popular Chinese social media app, I found pretty much all my baking and cooking recipes on there. I think I spend more time on this app than Instagram, but anyways, for some reason, almost every recipe has a different temperature. I looked at at least like five different recipes. So I had to try different methods. The first time failed because I had the temperature too high. The surface was too crispy to roll and the cake was just too dry. For my oven, the perfect temperature is 285 degrees and I baked for 20 minutes. Afterwards, I brought it up to 295 and baked for another five minutes and it came out good. I don't want to say perfect because I'm not a cake expert. It rolled pretty good and still have moisture in it. It's very soft and fluffy, so I'm pretty happy with it. I would recommend you guys to test it out first before fully commit to doing a like a complicated pattern cake. Maybe do a plain one first and just see how it goes. Speaking of baking, I also recommend um, a baking mat or baking sheet instead of wax paper because wax paper cause wrinkles. I was using a baking mat in the video and as you can see, it's not the size of the pan. So it's like sticking out a little bit. I should have done more preparation for this video, but at least you guys can learn from me, um, my mistakes. And I hope yours came out a lot better than mine. After I finished drawing the outline, I kept it in the fridge. Uh, for a little bit while I was preparing for the other cake batter and later I will take it out to fill it in with different color and then once the oven is preheated I baked it for one to two minutes and then I took it out and poured the other cake batter this method only works with this specific cake batter because like I mentioned the consistency is thicker so after I let it set in the fridge for a while it kind of solidified the mixture a little bit so that when I'm filling in the colors the outlines won't get mixed into them does it make sense don't forget to pat on the back of the pan to get rid of the 
bubbles and be more gently or you can just drop the pan onto the table like I did. Once it finished baking, you want to let it cool down to room temperature before cutting it and transferring it onto the wax paper. When you're cutting the end where you're gonna start rolling, you want to cut it into like a 45 degree angle so it will close better. So as you can see right here, the pattern got stuck onto the baking mat and it's not transferring onto the cake. It's because I used two different cake batters and I was really disappointed because I loved how the pattern came out, the color and everything. And then I was trying to fix it with some chocolate syrup. It kind of worked if you don't look too closely but if you look at them separately like the pattern and the cake they both came out pretty good it just they didn't stick together so yeah at this point i thought about starting over Moving on to my favorite part, I loved whipped cream when I was little, like that's the only part I would eat. I wouldn't eat like the actual cake, I don't know if anybody can relate, but I'm kind of the same with ice cream cones. Growing up, I only liked the ice cream part and I would just finish that part really quick and give the rest to my mom. <laughs> my mom always ate my leftovers because she doesn't like like wasting food now i feel really bad about it but i feel like in the future i would be the same way my mom has influenced me a lot growing up and i digress um, so when you're applying the whipped cream you want to put more extra around the end where you're gonna start the roll we want the inside of the cake roll like the center part like to be filled with whipped cream and when you're rolling it I've seen people using like a rolling stick at the end of the wax paper to help you roll but it didn't work for me so I kind of just did it my own way but one tip is don't do it on a slippery surface like I did and maybe do it a little bit slowly because as you can see in the video I'm getting a little sloppy and I got some whipped cream on the wax paper yeah I'm not really good at it yet so afterwards you just want to let it chill in the fridge for an hour and it's ready to be served okay we're starting over so for the second one I just used the same cake batter that I used for the entire cake uh, to make the pattern. The consistency compared to the first cake batter is more like liquidy and fluffy so it's not easy to make super detailed like outlines. I kind of just went with it and fingers crossed I was just hoping that it will work. After I finished the outlines, I baked it for one minute, one to two minutes, and then I took it out, 
fill in the colors, and then I baked again for one to two minutes, and then take it out again, pour the rest of the cake batter into the pan, you know, the same steps. And for this step, you want to do it quick because we don't want the cake batter to um, melt. Although, as you can see, like the pattern got transferred onto the baking mat, I think it's okay because it didn't ruin the image. Also, when I was baking the pattern i maybe should have baked it for another minute or so because some of the pink and green got leaked into like the background which i thought was pretty cool because it kind of looks like a watercolor painting a little abstract if i paid more attention on the pattern and put more effort into it also baked it a little bit longer it would come out even better but i'm pretty happy with it that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And the morals of this video are always be more prepared. Keep trying. Don't give up. And it always tastes better than it looks. Let me know if you guys like the voiceover thing or not. I'm probably not gonna do this often. But sometimes it's nice to have a voice commentary in the video. So I hope you liked it. Don't forget to check out Skillshare. I hope you're having a lovely day. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!